meeting for the Putnam County School Board on July 19th, 2022 is now in session. We'll have our Pledge of Allegiance by Mr. David Buckles and our invocation by Mr. Bud McGinnis. Repeat after me. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us engage in meaningful discussion, allow us to grow closer as a board, and nurture the bonds of our community. Please bless us abundantly with your love, your grace, and your peace. Yes. We ask in your holy name. Amen. 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 Welcome everyone. It's nice to have a, a full boardroom. Yeah, sure is. Um, we're going to have our presentations. The first presentation is the Superintendent's Student Advisory Council by Dr. Cernsey and Ms. McDaniel. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's good to see everybody here tonight. I think this is the largest crowd we've had in a long time. Kind of sorry we don't have a lemonade stand or something set up for the crowd. Yeah, or a food truck or something like that. But it's good to have you here. And, and we're here to celebrate many people tonight or today. But we're going to start with some distinguished students. And this is our S Superintendent Student Advisory Council that we started this year. And we actually invited them to come into this room and sit around a big circle and and really we just had good conversations and i tell you what when you get teenagers together and especially if you're getting some food and something to drink they would tell you what what's on their mind whether you like it or not and it's been variable valuable information for me and there's a lot of things i've taken away from that and and i've talked to principals about and say guess what your people are saying i didn't give any names <laughs> but uh they said some real some things i think will really inform them and help them do a better job in the school. As a matter of fact, I talked to all of our principals just yesterday, principals and assistant principals. I said, if nothing else this year, I, we need to make sure that we give our students a voice and, and let them say what's important to them and uh, to make sure that everything we're doing is in their best interest. And we do that by listening to them and making sure that they're being heard. So I really appreciate these folks doing it. I know they hated leaving their schools to come all the way here. And I'm, I'm joking, but uh, to come here and hmm. talk, but it was really meaningful. I probably got more out of it than they did. I got a lot of advice. So what I'd like to do is recognize each of the uh, participants of this council by school. Mrs. McDaniel's gonna hand you a nice little certificate of appreciation. And if you would, as you come up, if you line up, we, we do wanna take a photo at the end. So I'll start with Crescent City Junior Senior High School and um, Elena Garcia. Paula Cruz. Did I say that correct? Amelia Delaney. Sheldon Patrick. And Jeremiah Cook. Okay, within, if y'all stay up here, Interlochen Junior, Junior Senior High School, Meredith Hornsby. <laughs> we'll make sure they receive their certificates if they're not here. Uh, Nathan Carpenter. <laughs> Sanaya Oliver. <laughs> Natalie Valdez. Jaden Perry. Here's Jaden. Ashton Smith. All right, thank you, Ashton. All right, representing Mellon Learning Center, Ian Napier. Representing QI Roberts Junior Senior High School, Lily 
Tell Rico. I know she's here, Brianna Smith. Donisha Williams. Lucas Stouffer. And Elijah Dixon. I guess they're all tired from giving so much advice or something. <laughs> Wore them out. And finally, Palaka Junior Senior High School, Yamira Passmore. There she is. Very good. Yeah. Justice Curry. <laughs> Addison Nettles. Chloe Dasher. Tavon Adams. And last but not least, Andrew McClellan. Okay, if I could ask our chair person, please step down and for a photo. Okay, our next presentation is our recipi recipients of the product of Putnam. <laughs> okay, we are, uh, as you know, we started several years ago recognizing those graduates who have gone through a Putnam County High School and have graduated and have gone on uh, and, and done something special gone to school, got a job. They've come back to Putnam County and they currently reside in Putnam County and they work in Putnam County or they volunteer. But one way or the other, they give back to Putnam County. And that is our product, the Putnam Award. And this is um, a process that we started where anybody in the community can nominate these uh, citizens. Uh, it's online and it's like seven different categories like education, community service, manufacturing and so on. And uh, the Palaka Daily News and the Chamber of Commerce actually get together and they review all the applications and they actually select the, uh, you know, the final recipients. But more importantly, we recognize these graduates at their high school, their alma mater, their graduation, which is kind of cool. Last time they've been on the stage was probably the last time they <laughs> received a diploma. So it's really neat. The main thing is we want to show our students that it is cool to be back in Putnam County, okay? It's okay. We want you to come back here and give back to your community. And th these are living examples of who have done it. And we actually, if you can help me lift this, we actually started a plaque. This hangs in the hallway. And the recipients of this award have their names permanently uh, attached to this plaque. So we are in year, the fourth year, right? Fourth year. and. Uh, That'll be hanging out there in the um, hallway. So again, this is something we hold dear, and we want to make sure we celebrate those people who are great Putnam County citizens, okay? So I'm going to call their name. Ms. McDaniel will hand their plaque. Yeah. And um, if you would, just remain up here and for a photo. In the area of education, Jennifer Wright. In the area of community service, Brianna Kelly. In the area of business, Skeet Alford. Yep, 
been working been for working. sure. I can get him a new pair of jeans. In the area of agriculture, Teddy Siler. Thank you. In the area of public service, Daniel Weaver. In the area of healthcare, Robin Jernigan. <laughs> Seems like you were just in high school. Well, <laughs> and finally, in the area of industrial manufacturing, Michael Orr. Very good. Ollie, would you join me? <coughs> Jennifer. Take Teddy with you. <laughs> Our next presentation will be the Commissioner's Recognition Awards. Okay. Dr. Sarnes and Ms. McDaniel. So for several years we've been recognizing the Commissioner of Education from the state of Florida um, asked for districts to nominate at least one business and one school who exemplify community service. And um, the business, we've nominated several businesses over the last several years for things they do to support the school district, whether it's financially or you know, through their time or efforts, whatever the case might be, we always try to recognize one particular business that really stands out. This year, as part of the uh, Business Award, Commissioner's Business Award, and by the way, this business uh, representative from the business will be able to join me at some point in time and meet with the commissioner probably in Orlando along with uh, representatives from all 67 school districts and to be recognized by the commissioner. So this year the Putnam County School District would like to recognize for the bu uh, commissioner's business recognition award for their service for supporting our schools and our departments for really anything they've asked for financially and through just uh, any resources they need. I'd like to recognize Seminole Electric Cooperative, and I know Jerry, it, J Jerry is here representing uh, Seminole. Make it pretty. You will improve Jerry. <laughs> Jerry looks a lot. <laughs> and now the NEFEC Leadership Academy Award. I've got one more to do. Oh, you do? Oh, sorry. By the way, I didn't say Jerry. Jerry McClellan. I'm sorry. Just want to make sure everybody got. Last name. Thank you for being here to represent Seminole, Jerry. <laughs> okay, the the school winner this year for the commissioner's family and community involvement award uh, goes to a particular school. Actually, I'll go ahead and call the school Kelly Smith Elementary, and it's Kathy Oysters in the back. Kathy, would you come up just a minute? All right. <laughs> and before. Um, just come up and I'll, I'll hand it to you. I want to read some of the things that Kelly Smith has done this year, which is really cool. They've really put a lot of extra effort, especially during the pandemic, when it was hard to get parents to, you know, come into the school because of all the health restrictions. But they've, they've done some really unique things to still connect with their parents. First of all, one of the most innovative activities was the introduction of a food truck they would bring on campus so the parents could eat. Of course, the kids had to eat school food, I guess. <laughs> but food truck just to, yeah, school food's good, by the way. 
That's wonderful. If Nikki's yeah. here, some of the best food I've had. <laughs> but food truck, just in case you wanted another choice, they would bring a food truck in. Another thing they did, which I actually took part in during, in the heat of the pandemic, was a family virtual night where kids took home, uh, like, rocket stuff, where they could build a rocket, like PVC pipe and a Coke bottle and, and a little rocket, and they would go home and build a rocket with their family, and they would actually film it on Facebook Live. Film is not the right word. Video it on Facebook Live. <laughs> And then they go out in the yard, and then they would launch the rocket. And everybody was on Facebook Live, and uh, Mike Tucker and Kathy were back at school, and they were sitting in chairs with the background like they were in a big spaceship. Oh. Right? It was a spaceship. It was. It was. Sorry. I forgot we brought a spaceship on campus, yeah. Anyway, it was really cool and uh, just to be a part of that. And all the families took part, never had to leave the yard to be a part of that. Some other things they've done to really outreach to their families. Uh, they've hosted a uh, fall festival, a welcome to Whoville, winter fun. They had a Polar Express night. Mm-hmm. Is that where you had the snow? That was last year. That was last year. Okay. They had snow on the ground. It didn't last long, but they had it. It, it did last long? <laughs> Must have been a cold night. <laughs> Virtual painting with literacy family night and so on. And they also have done things to contribute to some of our local nonprofits like Feed the Need, Hurricane Disaster Relief, Lee Connolly House, Safe Pet Shelter, and Solaris and Vintage Care. So Kelly Smith Elementary is well deserving of this honor and I just want to present that to you. Kathy, did you want me to share a few oh, stories? Yeah. Okay. I got a couple too. <laughs> and I've got some good ones. As do I. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Okay, now it's the NEFEC Leadership Academy Award. Okay, good afternoon. I am Sarah Jean McDaniel. I'm Executive Director for Leadership Development, and I have the honor of presenting some awards to uh, some of our leaders in the district. Um, We are very fortunate to have NEFEC right here in our community, um, and we partner with them for many initiatives, but one is for our leaders in our district. Um, We have three Uh, aspiring leaders that went through the Aspiring Leader Academy. And I want to call you up. I see Lucas is here if you want to come up. We have Jillian Lee and Ian Bowes. I don't know if they are here today, but come on up, Lucas, and stand right here. (laughs) I want to tell you a little bit about this program. Um, This is on top of their school day. um, And these three leaders went through um, educational leadership uh, school. So they've already done that, but also went through a 40 hour course. And it goes through three modules where they learn the school leadership piece and go through data disaggregation. And they work with a school based leader uh, in this program, they go through leader the leader as a coach, which is very important to learn skills um, for coaching those teachers and also the leader as an administrator. So it's just a wonderful program, um, an, another lens, an, another um, step in that, that leadership um, step towards that school administrator or coach or just that instructional leader because that's also an important role there. So we want to congratulate these three um, participants in the Aspiring Leader Program and thank you for all the work you put into that and for pursuing that. So here, Lucas, <coughs> is your certificate for that and we will get the other two for certificate. Congratulations. Good job, Lucas. Congratulations, Lucas. Yes. Just kill a big old deer when you go. <laughs> That's a mean one. I told him that's why he's such a good leader. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, he forgot everything you taught him playing baseball. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. 
And the second program that I want to highlight is our Principal Leadership Academy. And if we could have Kathy Oyster, uh, Stephanie Reed, and Amber Simons come up, please. Kathy, you should have just stayed right up here with me. <laughs> so the Principal Leadership Academy through NEFAC is, um, it's a program where a, the principal, um, well, it could be a sitting principal or assistant principal. These three ladies are assistant principals, and they've completed the program, and they have earned their Level 2 Florida School Principal Certification. And this is not an easy program. Um, they worked all day in an elementary school as an administrator and went through a 15-month program that um, consisted of two field experiences uh, with a capstone action research project. Um, and I had the privilege of actually being an evaluator of, I, I was not able to evaluate their projects and the projects all had numbers, but they did take theirs out. Um, so I did see the work that was done in um, this program and it's a lot of work. Um, so they, uh, they did a lot of work on top of their everyday job. So um, it, was, it was great work. And in the end, I did have the privilege to see them present their projects to uh, not only myself, but other NEFAC um, administrators that came. And I want to tell you the neat thing about uh, these three is that you could tell that our district had a common goal. Their three projects were very focused on the same um, goal and that was just that teamwork and the rigor of our students and just that student-led teaming it, it, it was very neat and everyone sitting around that table recognized that in in their project so i was very proud to be there and just see the work that they presented that day um, but as completers, they were eligible to receive 150 in-service points for their work and get that level two Florida school principal certification on their certificate. So congratulations. And I know that you can just exhale and take a. Sarah, a, a Sarah, Sarah Jean, <laughs> yes, I, I'd, I'd like to just say a couple of words. And this is good. This is <laughs> this is really good. I look at Sarah Jean doing the presenting and the speaking and I see Stephanie and Kathy. And look over there at Amber. And it, these kids, they were kids. Yes. They came through our school system, and they've got the heart to not only teach kids, but to love them and to get them through difficult circumstances and do the right thing. And I'm so proud of you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. What a proud. Kathy's kind of on the edge there. there you go. It's absolutely incredible. Never former students come in behind me. And I do want to say that I do think that Putnam had one of the if not the largest group, the cohort of uh, participants and completers. So I was very proud of, of both awesome. of the, awesome. the groups. Just seeing yeah. our former students to come back and do this. Thank you, Sarah Jean. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Um, and now we'll have our Putnam County Education Foundation scholarship presentation by Mr. Les Sims and Mr. Mike Perry. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Gator Club. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Les Sims, and I am the chairman of the Scholarship Committee for the Education Foundation of Putnam County. I want to start off by saying thank you to the school board for giving us a few minutes to make this presentation, along with uh, Dr. Cerency and his staff and all the students and the parents and the teachers that are here. Thank you. The Putnam County Education Foundation started a scholarship program this year. Our budget was $3,000, and if we could raise that money, we could distribute it to the, the, the students that applied. 
through the graciousness of our board, we were able to get $8,500, um, which enabled us to allow all applicants to get some sort of scholarship, all 12. So I think they did a great job there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep this short and sweet and to the point so we can get this move, uh, moving along. I'm going to start, and if, when I call your name out, if you'll come on up, um, I'll read a quick bio real quick. We'll take a picture. You'll grab your check, and then we'll get one picture at the end with everybody, and uh, we'll move forward. So starting with number one, Reagan Grimes. <laughs> Reagan attended Crescent City Junior Senior High School and maintained a 3.85 GPA. She participated in the National Honor Society, the Beta Club, Student Council, var Varsity Softball and Cheer, and FFA. Some of her achievements were the Principal's Award, CTE Superstar, Animal Science Specialist Certification, Homecoming Queen, Prom Queen, wow. Varsity Cheer Captain. She's, queen. <laughs> She's currently employed with the Putnam County Board of County Commissioners and she plans on attending St. John's River State College. You go, go. Congratulations, Reagan. Number two, Lauren Hutcherson. <laughs> Lauren attended QI Roberts Junior Senior Middle School, High School, maintained a 4.09 GPA. She participated in one year of Interact, two years of FFA. Her achievements included Putnam County Top Scholar. She graduated summa cum laude, and one of her proudest achievements is being called a mom. She's employed with Chick-fil-A, and she plans on attending St. John's River State College in, in the nursing field. Congratulations, Lauren. <laughs> Number three, Jamar Brown. <laughs> Jamar attended QI Roberts Junior Senior High School and maintained a 4.83 GPA. Awesome. He participated in four years of basketball at Palaka High School, two years of National Honor Society, two years of Interact Club, <coughs> one year of Beta Club. Some of his achievements include the Player of the Year, two-time All-County Award, All-Conference, graduated summa cum laude. He achieved the Knights Character Award, and he was a Putnam County Top Scholar through middle school and high school, maintaining a 4.0 GPA all through those years. He plans on attending the Florida Gateway College and studying exercise science. Congratulations. <laughs> Eli Tincher. There he is. <laughs> Eli attended Penn Isle Academy, maintained a 4.05 GPA. He participated in football, basketball, and was the senior class treasurer. Some of his achievements include the A honor roll, the valedictorian, defensive player of the year for football and baseball, and was a scholar athlete. He's employed with the Caliber Car Wash and is in, going to attend the St. John's River State College and uh, study athletic training. Congratulations. Brianna Smith. <laughs> Brianna attended QI Roberts Junior Senior High School and maintained a 4.70 GPA. She participated in F FFA and was the chapter president. She also was the youth on the youth, youth advisory committee for the Putnam County Fair. Some of her achievements were the soccer teammate award, Cambridge Scholar with Merit, AB Honor Roll, Putnam County Top Scholar. She's employed with Papa John's and plans on attending Cornell University and studying agri-science. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Next one up is Carly Drew. <laughs> so Carly is a little special here. She uh, graduated high school last year uh, and is attending the Embry-Riddle University, which is quite impressive. While at the high school, she participated in the Army ROTC, varsity softball, Varsity Weightlifting, Anchor Club, Beta Club, Student Council. Some of her achievements were the Miss Putnam County Fair. She made the Dean's List, Outstanding Senior, All-Conference Softball, Scholar Athlete, Rotary Lu Youth Leadership Award, and Auto Technician Certificate. What did you not do? <laughs> <laughs> she's employed with Bradley's, and uh, uh, she's attending Embry-Riddle University, where she's going to st study Global Conflict Studies. Congratulations. Next on the list is Amari Carruthers. <laughs> Amari attended Palatka High School, maintained a 4.02 GPA, participated in the Anchor Club and Interact. Achievements were top scholar and scholar athlete, 
employed with Treasure Harbor Preschool and attends, is, plans on attending the University of North Florida with NICU nursing. Congratulations. <laughs> Next on the list is Frederick Rempler. Frederick attended QI Roberts Junior Senior High School and maintain, maintained a 4.45 GPA. He participated in varsity football, varsity soccer, and varsity weightlifting. Some of his achievements, he attained a certificate in Microsoft, was a Putnam County top scholar, all academic in football, and plans on attending the University of Central Florida. Congratulations. <laughs> Next on the list is Kendall Asbury. Kendall attended QI Roberts Junior Senior High School and maintained an impressive 4.88 GPA. Some of the participation was the Palatka High School Theater Department, Student Government, National Honor Society, and Interact Club. Some of her achievements include the Cambridge ACE Diploma, Cambridge Scholar Award with Distinction, Presidential Scholar Nominee, and she plans on attending the University of Central Florida where she wants to be a professor. Congratulations. Don she will do it for sure. No doubt in my mind. Dante Wilkinson. Dante attended Palatka High School, maintained a 3.74 GPA. He had participated in the Generation Yes Club. Some of his achieve achievements were All County Weightlifting, Spring Leadership Award, Florida Athletic Coaches Academic Award. He's currently a church clerk and plans on attending Warner University and studying sports management. Congratulations, Dante. Next on the list is Brooklyn Bridges. <laughs> Brooklyn attended QI Roberts Junior Senior High School, maintained a 4.65 GPA. She participated in FFA, Student Government, Interact Club, and Yearbook. Some of her achievements were the Putnam County Top Scholar and Cambridge Scholar. She's currently employed with Dunkin' Donuts and plans on attending the University of South Florida. Last but not least, <laughs> Kendall Cheatham. Kendall attended Palatka High School and maintained a 3.70 GPA. Some of her participation was in cheerleading, student council, vice president of the senior class. Some of her achievements were graduating magna cum laude and the Palatka, Palatka High School Lillian Brown English Award. She is employed with Bradley's and that plans on attending St. John's River State College and wants to be a respiratory therapist. Congratulations, Kendall. That's it on the presentation. Uh, recipients, congratulations. And uh, we look forward to see what you guys can do with your careers in the future and come back to your hometown and uh, let's see what we can do. You wanna go ahead and get a picture up front here? Mike, are you gonna speak, Mike? Well, I think it's a travesty y'all failed to mention the lovely Carrie Reynolds. There were 12, 12 of them? I think so. Let me tell you what, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Yep. Yeah. You are right. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. Congratulations, y'all. <laughs> Thanks, Les. Thank you for your time. Thank you all. That makes you feel good. I don't know what the Yeah, that. Yeah, that money and run. Huh? That, that's that's where everybody <laughs> came from. <laughs> yep. That's great. Man. Have to give them money more often. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and this should overshadow the negative. Yeah. Bad, but that money to expulsion. I was just telling things. Sandy that you. You get all the negative, and then you, you look at this, and you see this is what it's really about. And we can help those that have problems. We, we help them. But my goodness, look at the opportunities. And the foundation you did wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> are there any seats available? The Bennetts are going to stay for the rest of the board. No. Yeah. 
Lucas, you need to learn. It wouldn't hurt you to sit there and watch. Or. Okay. Um, wow. That was a, that's a great day so want. far. Let's see if we can continue. Um, do we have any public comment? No? Okay. So we, we have also no public hearing, so we'll move to the consent agenda. Ms. Crawford, do you have anything you would like to pull? I do not. I took care of the one, one thing I had. Okay, and Mr. McGinnis? I had nothing to pull. And Mr. Buckles? I wanted to just pull one item to just mention to the superintendent, just a kind of a throw it out there thing, and but I, I'm, I'm certain this will probably be fine, but go ahead. What, 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 is, what, it? what is it? It would be E6, Consent of Guardian Training pay, Payment. E6. And Mrs. Gilliard? I'm good. Thank you. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda item minus item E6. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Bud McGinnis and a second by Ms. Sandra Gilliard to accept the consent agenda minus item E6. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Buckles? We've lost most of our audience, but it'll still be in the record that, you know, the superintendent brought this to us sometime, some years ago, and we went through a lot of grief mm -hmm. over this program, and you see the importance every day, and, and school districts throughout America are trying to mimic this now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I just wanted to tell the superintendent if he in his travels comes across other ways to further enhance it just bring it to us to let us figure out how to fund it for you you know we're open to other avenues as well and i know one day you're going to hear there may be a teacher that can shoot well that wants to carry a gun it's those are all things down the road and everybody says don't put them in it but it, when it's not when it's your wife that's a teacher that's having to sit there and watch kids be shot and, and children. It's something to think about. You were out front. The district was out front. Everybody was scared, and we're still kind of worried about it. I mean, it's you, you still, you can say we're as safe as, as we, we can be, but you're never, you know, it, none of us is as strong as all of us. We've got to utilize everything from mental health to 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 this, to discipline policies, to guidelines, and if you see something, say something. And I know, I just want to reiterate that to you to bring it to us if something like well, that. I appreciate it, and I, and I want to uh, compliment this board. Of course, it's a little bit different board when this is passed, but that's one of the most difficult times for all of us. Oh, yeah. But I just want to reassure you that that has been a successful program that is being viewed across the state. And I think in the past, some of the past circumstances we've seen in Texas and other places, um, you know, people have asked me, well, what are you going to do different as a result of that? And I said, nothing. I, we're in great shape. And, I mean, never say you're perfect, but I think we are where a lot of people are, where a lot of people are not now. And, um, you know, we've we, we are training guardians this year. And, Thomas, what, over 70 guardians, give or take? Give or take. Yeah. We don't want to give out too much information, <laughs> no, but obviously not their identity, but we do have a large number that are in our schools. And I've been looking at additional fencing and hardening that you're doing, and I'm just, I'm pleased. Yeah. But if, if you come across something else, don't hesitate to bring Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I appreciate that. And if that. you want to see the finished product that the superintendent in conjunction with the sheriff's office put together, it's powerful and it's very impressive. Uh, Waters. Uh, I get her first name, Allison. Allison. Yes, uh, they. It is powerful. You, yeah. you. It, it's long, but it's it. It's very impressive, and a lot of districts now are requesting uh, that presentation. Uh, it's the sheriff's piece, the superintendent's piece. Uh, uh, we have assistant uh, superintendent bowling as a part of it, it and it takes it from ground root. As a matter of fact, that board that he referenced, they are even in it, in mm -hmm. the, uh, the video uh, taping, where in the actual, I won't say, well, I'm going to say what it was, arguments, I mean, debates, strong debates 
and it's in the records. All of this is just compiled, and it is powerful. Yeah. And Very the impressive. sheriff and I actually presented on our program, I think it was last summer in New Orleans, yes. to the National um, School Resource Officers Conference. So this is recognized nationally. So Yes. Yeah. But compliments powerful. to our board, it never would have happened powerful. without our board approval. Well, thank, thank you, Mr. Buckles. That's all. Um, I, I make a motion. We we uh, we pass um, E six. Second. So we have a motion by Mr. David Buckles and a second by Miss Sandra Gilliard to accept item E six, consent for the garden guardian training program. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. Motion carries six zero. Six. Oh, five, excuse me. Okay. We added a Charlie point. noted. <laughs> <laughs> Extra point. Okay, we will go out of regular session and into emergency session. We have um, four items. Madam Chair, item L1, a, ma a motion that we accept the payment for employees working on bus safety video justification explanation time since i second that okay we have a motion by miss sandra gilliard and a second by mr david buckles to accept item l1 in the emergency session all those in favor say aye aye, aye. all those opposed motion carries five zero item two i'm sure i'll make a motion that we approve item l2 payment for employees training and youth mental health first aid justification explanation time sensitive i'll second that okay, we have a motion by mr bud mcginnis and a second by mr david buckles to accept item l2 in the emergency session all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. all those opposed motion carries five zero item three Madam Chairman, I make a motion that we accept the MOU between Putnam County District School Board and the Putnam County Health Department. Justification, explanation, time sensitive. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Jane Crawford and a second by Ms. Sandra Gilliard to accept item L3 in the emergency session. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries 5-0. Item four. Madam Chair, I make a motion motion that we approve L4, the 2022-2023 student code of conduct, justification, explanation, time sensitive. I'm gonna make a second to that and I will, I will address it under my, a, a few comments about this under my board report. But, okay, we uh, have a motion by Mr. Bud approve. McGinnis and a second by Mr. David Buckles to accept item L4 in the emergency session. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries 5-0. Okay, we are out of emergency session, back into regular session. Um, we have two items. Uh, we have no unfinished business, and we have two items under um, new business. Do we need a roll call on consensus, Charlie? Or Is there any further discussion before we do the roll call? I, I don't have any, but they may. That, okay. And I gotta tell you, folks, the, just uh, looking at the first item about homeless students, I, I still don't, I don't know if I, we've got a real accurate count because I, I still think there are more out there than we know. When you've got so many children that arrive in kindergarten and can't even speak English, it's hard to it's find out who's business. where. But I, I have to trust that superintendent and his staff are really on top of this to the best of their ability and and if they're not he'll let us know and we'll help we'll do what we can but that's that's all any other discussion no nope. district <coughs> one advertise district two advertise district three advertise district four advertise district five advertise so we need so we're good we're good for both of yeah. them. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, for uh, number one. one. Number one. Okay. Number two. Um, number two is a consensus to advertise amendment of policy 9130. Any discussion? 
Okay. District one. Advertise. District two. Advertise. District three. Advertise. District four. Advertise. District five. Advertise. Okay, we'll move to our reports by board members, the board attorney, and the superintendent. Um, Ms. Gilliard, are you ready? Yes, ma'am, real quick. Um, just want to, as always, commend those employees that have given their very best to our district, to our students, in whatever capacity that he or she served, and they have earned the right to retire. Hmm. And so we do thank them to Ms. Sheila Fields for 23 years, 10 months, Ms. Mar uh, Marcia Chesser, 10 years, 8 months, uh, Carolyn Yvonne Thomas, 27 years, 4 months, uh, Cynthia Trembley, 24 years, 3 months, and Jennifer Sheldon, 23 years and 5 months. Again, uh, they're all women. Ladies, we thank you for all that you have done for the students and the employees of the Putnam County School District. <clears throat> Just want to commend, don't know their names, the only one I knew that I saw over there across the fence working before I called the police on them uh, was uh, Mr. Richard Austin. They were over in the Brown and Pierce campus and it was a Saturday morning around seven and I knew nobody had any business over there. But these were volunteer fathers that were over there They're in the pre-K kindergarten uh, refurbishing, uh, restoring Aww. the playground. They were building, they were sawing and everything. And so, Mr. Richard, you know who they are. Just to let them know, we greatly appreciate them giving up a Saturday to do that for our children. I have on mine, Mr. Buckles, I have written Code of Conduct booklet. The, the people that labored on that booklet, you've done an outstanding job. I did copy some of the pages that were mentioned uh, it covers everything, any and everything that deals with our students and, and our parents and reporting situation. It gives them places for mental health uh, issues that they may go, be going through, bullying. It left no stone unturned. And I just want to say thumbs up Rebecca, to those people that worked on that. And then the product of Putnam and all the others that were recognized here this afternoon just an excellent job, and you'd be surprised. No, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, how far thank you goes. Just something as simple as a thank you, letting people know that you appreciate them. It keeps them showing up. Oh, yeah. Even when it's not in the paycheck, it keeps them showing up and loving the children, like Mr. Buckle said. Can't help but do it. When every now and again you hear the word, I appreciate what you're doing, mm -hmm. thank you goes a long ways. Thank you, uh, Mr. Superintendent, you and your committee. I'm Thank done. You. Thank you, Ms. Gilliard. I dropped the mic. Um, Mr. Buckles. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chairman, I mentioned the Code of Student Conduct book because I, I spent plenty of years dealing with conduct in my early years. I even wound up in the appellate courts and in a case involving drugs used by students at school that wound up changing Florida statutes um, on a substance didn't have to be an actual drug if it was represented to be a drug it, 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 it became it was what you said it was when you sold it but for those that, there is so much rhetoric either on these crazy phones and in the news whichever station you want to put it on people talking about schools as if they're bad or school districts like they're the enemy all over America I just I'm just, it, it just gets ridiculous. I look at this, this, this work, and there is a catch-all, even if you don't have it covered in Florida, in, in your school board policy, there, there is a catch-all rule, and I'm gonna read it. The district school board reserves the right to punish behavior which is subversive to good order and discipline in the schools, even though such behavior is not specified or defined in the preceding written <coughs> rules. Such incidents are to be determined by the investigation findings and their comparison of similar leveled events within the discipline matrix. <coughs> People don't seem to realize this has been around for decades, as long as I can remember. And you, because you, you can't possibly fathom 
exactly what's going to occur. And I, I hear so many people <coughs> that feel like school districts are just willy-nilly <laughs> making up rules and regulations. The, the superintendent through NEPEC contracts, the district contracts with NEOLA to update, to be congruent with state law, all of our policies. And, and it's, I just, I have enough, I, I get, we all get accosted from place to place about something that they, someone didn't think was right. Well, if, it's, if, it, if you don't think it's right, call the school. If that doesn't work, call the superintendent. And sometimes we can work solutions out and sometimes we can't. But just because it's not written in the rules doesn't mean that it, it may not cause a, a disturbance or, or a problem in the schools. And I'm, I'm just, I wanted to point that out because it, it, I, you know, like the superintendent who gets all the grief uh, and, and his principals and deans, you, you have to realize that um, sometimes it's a judgment call and sometimes it may be something that to someone looks like you're, you're impending on someone's freedom of speech or their, or their, their views that they think are funny and it, and it may be something that's causing uh, threats armed incursions or threats in the community so you don't always know what's going on in the schools but I just wanted it read into the record that there are things that are not written here that can be punished if they're determined to be subversive to good order and public complaints I've heard all this stuff about parents coming into board meetings and, and which we welcome. We've had people come in and I've, I've had people come in and demand that I resign and, you know, or go to prison or wherever they think I should go, you know, and <laughs> sometimes even worse than that. But uh, that's, <laughs> that is, we allow parents to complain, but they, they can't come in and, and I guess it was years ago in a scam and shoot people. I mean, where they shot the school board and it, it was, you know, that's been a long time ago, but it happens. And thank goodness we have Travis Weaver right here next to us in case something does. But uh, it's just not, everything is not as it seems when, and what you hear, these people selling books on TV, trying to get rich over saying how bad schools are. It's just not true. There might be some problems here and there and hither and yon, but if, if it's a problem here and we find out about it, we pick up the phone and we call the superintendent and the board attorney and we try to get it straightened out. And likewise, if he has a problem, he is our secretary by law, he is our chief executive officer, his rules and his statutory responsibilities are much different than a school board. We can't do but certain things. We're, our, our primary responsibility is budget and policy. And we can sit, we can disagree with him on certain things, but it's not productive until you can convince him uh, of, of good alternatives. So. I'll, I've had enough Chatty Cathy talk today. I've talked enough and had just, I guess I was so happy seeing all those former kids that went through our schools up here that uh, it's just been a great day. Mm -hmm. That concludes my, my remarks. Thank you, Mr. Buckles. Mr. McGinnis? Okay. Uh, congratulations, the product of Putnam recipients. And definitely want to extend a thank you to the uh, Putnam County Education Foundation without them we are we we are so much further behind but they have pushed us forward and I'm I would back them any way I can to support what they're trying to do for our students to further their education and advance them um, I was glad to see on social media that teachers are refueling themselves this summer because it there really doesn't seem like a very long time this summer for some reason it's been really it feels doesn't feel like a summer um, I do want to uh, make note of the new website information on the district. It's uh, very informative. I took the internet speed test. I've taken a couple of tests. I took the tobacco-free Florida survey. I'm a product tester, so I've <laughs> taken a couple of those this summer. And um, one thing that's been brought up, I guess, with the Guardian program that I'll just have to sh put out there because safety is a big focus for me always has been in every pretty much every profession I've served well the big two big ones education and the Postal Service but one thing that I remember uh, early in the Postal Service when there were so many shootings that my worst fear was what would we do if it came into the schools and that's where we are now and I'm just really proud that we've done what we've done as a district mm -hmm. because now we are the model and 
there's no compromise in our kids' safety. So just yeah. thank you on that. That's it. Thank you, Mr. McInnes. Ms. Crawford? I've just been sitting here thinking this whole meeting. Um, we have so much to be thankful for in Putnam County. Um, we have great leaders who continue to train to become better leaders. Um, and we have organizations who continually give back to our district mm -hmm. and to our students. Um, just like our education board and Seminole, they've been a wonderful partner to, to us through the years. Um, I'd like to congratulate the retirees as I count down the days till I'm a retiree. Um, those women that Ms. Gilliard called out their names have given a lot of service to Putnam County. Um, and Bud brought this up. I can't believe it's almost time for school to start back. I know you administrators have worked so hard this summer when you weren't going to conferences and being trained for something, I guess you had to get master schedules ready and classrooms ready, and it's almost here. It just is crazy how fast time goes. Um, I'm just gonna, going to be praying that we have a smooth start, smooth start, and a safe start. Um, and other than that, I'm I'm done. Thank you, Miss Crawford. I, uh, I just have a few things. Um, first, I'd like to congratulate the Melrose um, 15 and under uh, baseball team for their um, win um, on Saturday. North Florida 15 and under champions. Um, congratulations to the, the players, the coaches, the families. I know it's a lot of time, a lot of money. Um, but really to the community as a whole because they fed into those children and um, they were successful, and um, you know, I just it says a lot for the Melrose community. So congratulations to everyone. Um, I did have the opportunity to go to an AVID Leadership One Day Conference, and um, it was really neat to see a, a program that you have kind of seen from a completely different side. And um, so I feel a lot more equipped to. Um, answer avid type questions. Um, I also used a little bit of the modeling with my um, children's church. It was a very successful lesson. I, <laughs> I was really happy about it and um, thankful that I had something a little different to do with them. Um, I, one thing that I kind of have a, a big, I feel very conflicted about the military um, service to equate to a four-year teaching degree. I, I understand the reasoning, I think, behind it, but I am conflicted. I, I definitely don't want to. If, if roles were reversed, I believe teachers would have to go through quite a extensive training to, um, to be in the service. Yeah. And so I, I, I don't know, I'm just very conflicted. So um, looking at it. Anyway, I'll work through that and I'll learn more about that <laughs> and um, be more educated about it, but I am very conflicted. Um, congratulations to all the award winners, the product of Putnam, the students with the scholarships. Um, it's, it's just, it, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Two of the superintendent, actually three, Emmy wasn't here, but are all, um, children of children I taught, which kind of makes me feel a little bit older, but they're, they just started young. Um, and um, that's all I have. So, Mr. Douglas? Just a quick scheduling note. This Thursday, the 21st, is the special board meeting for the budget. I'll be out of town in Orlando giving a presentation on updates in Florida case law. So uh, Carol will be here in my stead, and uh, hopefully everything will go smoothly. Uh, Carol's will. doing an amazing job already on some heavy lifting research projects for the district, along with truancy. And uh, in the post-COVID world where the truancy wheels are starting to turn again, we have another truancy hearing coming up in August. So the office has been very busy um, getting those petitions together here recently, and we'll keep you updated on that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Douglas. Dr. Cernsey? I met a superintendent last week that's a super, that uh, his entire district is an island. I said, I bet you don't have any truancy problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty good uh, border there. I have a few things I want to mention to you. First of all, I, I want to congratulate the ARC of Putnam County. 
for hosting a, sen uh, a sensitivity training camp and uh, for a lot of our students with autism and and actually they they doubled their size from last year to this year. Did Carson go? Yeah. Good. Yeah. And I do have a state uh, an interest in that yeah. with my granddaughter there, but they really do reach out and and uh, really you know minister to those students that are in most need. So just hands hats off to them. Our school administrators um, have been meeting today and yesterday and uh, going through a lot of training, preparing for the new standards and, and that type of thing. So hats off to our administrators. I know Ms. McDaniel um, organized that at CELO. Um, speaking of training and getting together, our, all of our school, I'm sorry, district administrators are going to meet Monday for what we call retreat. Sounds like we're going off in the mountains or something, but we're just getting away from this building because if we have to get everybody away from their office so they don't run back in their office and do work. It's a secret location. <laughs> <laughs> it's still being uh, determined, right, Sarah Jean? Uh, yeah, yeah, I kind of waited till the last second. <laughs> anyway, the, the retreat, we actually are doing work there. It, the retreat is we are going through our strategic plan and going through all the action steps in our plan. Remember, action steps are can change from year to year, even though the plan is five years. And we're gonna go through and really do an analysis on how well these action steps have been going and they'll make you know, adjustments accordingly. Our school grades, we got our school grades uh, a week or two ago. And I, I'm just gonna tell you, I was very pleased with that. And especially under the circumstances yeah. that we've all been through. Absolutely. And I'll say that publicly, yeah. our administrators, teachers, students, all of our employees have done a phenomenal job. I think this year probably has been a tougher year than the previous year yeah. mm -hmm. because there, all the picking people up the and picking up the pieces and, and just together. people being out. And yeah. I don't know if we ever had a full class at any time because so many people are out, but they've done a remarkable job. And I'll just say we have continued to keep all of our schools out of turnaround for the last, what, four or five years? amazing we had 11 of our 18 schools at one time in state turnaround and now we have zero and we've been able to maintain that so you know we're not where we want to be yet but we're moving in that direction but congratulations to everyone who had a part of that our new teacher orientation begins tomorrow at CELO I get to go over and say a couple things to them but they're going through some intense training and I can't say enough for our new teacher program our novice teacher mentor program it is certainly paying dividends and our teachers certainly feel supported and uh, we want them coming back every year. So good job to all the HR departments for putting that on. And you talked about the budget hearing, just want to make sure we mention that and Charlie reminded you of that for Thursday. So that's all I have, unless I missed something. Is that everything? Okay, thank Does you, Madam Chair. Does anyone have anything else? This meeting's adjourned. Okay.